In 2017, I made an unofficial transit diagram covering the Oslo region in Norway. The challenge consisted of combining the metro, tram and train network in one single diagram. I think I did an alright job, as it looks clean and not cluttered. But is it actually functional? Now, five years later, it's time for a revisit. Let's take a look at what can be improved and the process of creating a new transit diagram. Looking at the official transit diagrams, there are a lot of lines. Combining them all together would just create a huge spaghetti mess now, wouldn't it? That's what I thought five years ago. Naturally, I merged all methods of transit into one line. One for metro, one for trams, one for local trains, and one for regional trains. I added small numbers next to the lines to show where each route went. But it's not easy to see where Metro Line 4 goes at a glance without actually looking carefully from one terminus to the other. Or let's say you're only remembering the colour of the route you're taking, but not the number. The complexity of Metro Line 5 is also lost in this style. Distances shouldn't matter too much in a transit diagram, but such large gaps should be avoided. After all, the journey time between these two stations is just one minute. I'm somewhat proud of this next feature though. I call it the frequency stroke. Thicker lines have frequent service, thinner lines not. Makes sense. This creates more focus on the city centre and less on regional train services. But user testing showed it could cause confusion. Someone thought it meant travel time between each station. That's not their fault though. It's my task as a designer to convey clear and logic design. So here's the game plan for the new diagram. Show all the lines on every network, thus making it easier to understand the service patterns. Make it recognisable, keep the original colours so there's less confusion. Compress lines to avoid unnaturally long distances between stations. And balance aesthetics and accessibility. A diagram needs to be clear and easy on the eye, in addition to meeting universal design requirements. With this in mind, let's begin! I started off sketching some rough ideas for the tram lines in the metro circle. I thought this shape would work out, but the city centre stations ended up being too crowded. I had to free up some space and decided to try a rounded rectangle instead. But if every line were constructed to 90 degree angles, this section would be a huge mess. Allowing for 45 degree lines instead helped a lot. When I design transit diagrams, I prefer using as many straight horizontal and vertical lines as possible. Every bend will add complexity to the diagram, making it harder to find the station you're looking for. A transit diagram is essentially just a list of all the stations on every route available. It doesn't have to be fully geographically correct, but it has to be logical and recognisable. I prefer grouping stations together, thus making it easier to read them as a list. Ideally, all text should be horizontal, but there are instances where I've used angle text to save space. Some designers might disagree with my viewpoint here, but I think it's easier on the eye to read a list of stations like this, rather than having them staggered or split up. A big challenge I faced was how to separate the different methods of transport – tram, metro and train lines. I wanted each line to use their original official colour, thus making them recognisable. This meant I couldn't for example use pastel colours to differentiate. Another solution with dashed or double striped lines weren't easy on the eyes. In the end, I decided to give the tram a thin stroke. Metro and trains would get the same thicker stroke. Having three different stroke weights would be too much clutter and it would be hard to see a solid contrast. So how do we separate the metro and train lines? I tried imitating this style, often symbolising trains, but it turned out to be a real challenge. If the white part was too dominant, it would look messy from far away. But if they were too small, you wouldn't even notice them and the whole point was gone. I settled down with this design, which I'm quite happy with. I also played with the idea of adding colour instead of white, but it looked too weird when I zoomed out. Oh, I also had to scrap the frequency stroke feature, considering thin strokes now meant tram lines. Up next, I defined the following hierarchy. Train lines on the bottom, followed by metro lines on top, and tram lines on top of that again. This would ensure clarity and consistency. All overlapping lines would also get padding so they didn't blend into the other lines. Another challenge was figuring out which shapes I'd use for the stations. 
At first, I tried to implement a Sydney style station blob, but it just looked too messy at large interchange stations. A classic white rounded rectangle with black borders were preferred. I placed the white field at all stations that allowed for an interchange to a different method of transport, just like they did in all the versions of the official metro diagram. Initially, I kept the circles for all other stations. However, this would prove difficult on train stations. The white station circles would blend in with the white dashed lines. Turns out the best solution would be the one found in the official tram and metro maps. A simple tick. After hours of tweaking, it was satisfying to finally see something coming together. But there's always room for improvement. The text and numbers should be bigger. Let's also change the background colour to something slightly warmer. We should also add fair zones. I have to tread carefully here though, as it can easily ruin the look of the diagram. Inspired by architect and map maker legend Jug Serovich, I added the zone numbers next to the stations like so. All stations in zone 1 are shown without numbers. Stations outside of Hruthish fair zones are separated by a grey line. I played with the idea of adding Oslo's boroughs or even landmarks. Say one had to the borough of Grinlaka, but you're unsure on its approximate location. A simple label could guide you in the right direction. However, here's the thing. With more elements added, the whole diagram would be too crowded. The number one priority is to show the system of every route, not make a geographically accurate map. With this in mind, I also excluded ferry services. There are already a lot of lines, so I don't want to scare people off by showing too much information. Clarity is key. Finally, let's add a legend with explanations, notices, and a route overview. And there we have it. Let's review. I've added all the lines, making it easier to understand the entire service network. At least in my opinion. But we're built all different. Perhaps you prefer the old version. If this was an official project though, there would be heaps of user testing. I've added all the original colours, with one cheeky exception. Officially, the Airport Express train uses a grey line. I don't find the colour contrast ideal when situated next to the pink L1 line. Instead, I opted for a dark blue colour, with orange dashes instead of white. I wanted this line in particular to stand out a little bit, considering it has different fares compared to all other lines. I've compressed the lines to avoid unnaturally long distances. But what about this part? Why the space? In short, they're just aligned to the grids. Without it, the diagram looks unstructured. Finally, I've tried my best to balance aesthetics and accessibility. I can't really claim that it has great user experience yet, as I haven't been able to do user testing. Do people understand the fare zone labels? Do they understand what's a metro line and what's a train line? Metro line 5 in particular is a challenge in itself. In real life, this single line does a loop the loop visiting the city centre stations twice. That's confusing to a lot of people. The other thing is that it wasn't always like this. In previous diagrams, it was divided into two lines, transitioning from one to the other at the top of the loop. I believe that's the best way to understand the complexity of the loop the loop line. Here's a mock-up on how it will look like in the same style of my new diagram. I'll stick to this version though, as line 6 doesn't exist in real life. The Fond Blue Line is a new metro line scheduled to open in 2029. It goes from Moyushua via Skayan to Fondabu. I think I need to reconsider the design layout in a couple of years. Actually, I might have to even sooner. Just when I finished this diagram, I read that there would be new train routes from the 11th of December 2022. So what you're looking at right now is only valid for another month or so. Great. Also, it kind of looks like an octopus, doesn't it? Check out the link in the description for a PDF version of the diagram, so you can zoom in as much as you want. Subscribe for more videos on design, traveling, gaming, and video essays. Thanks for watching.